everybody. How you doing today? Doing pretty good here. Thank you for asking. Uh, today's video is going to be about uh, lower end uh, budget bikes, but lower end budget bikes on the good side. Um, we're not going to be talking about necessarily your big box brand bikes like Walmart and Kmart, Target, places like that. We're not really going to dig too deep into those although they will come into play here in just a minute just a little so uh, uh, in my opinion a, a good budget bicycle is anywhere from around five hundred dollars to a thousand dollars now I know for some people that's just crazy uh, unheard of but the problem with that is you're basing your prices off of big box store bikes. Most of you guys are going to Walmart, Kmart, Target, and places like that, and you're seeing bicycles for $50, $100, maybe $150. And then whenever you're uh, out looking around and you go to a bike shop and you see a bike for $400, $500, $1,000, $5,000, Ten thousand, and yes, it keeps going. Then it's uh, it's a little bit uh, shocking, to say the least. Uh, those are some big prices. Uh, I personally would never buy a bicycle in the uh, thousands of dollars, but some people do, and normally those people don't need those bikes. They just want them, so. I'm just going to kind of go over uh, a couple of the differences between a decent budget bike and maybe uh, your typical Walmart budget bike. Um, as most of you know, if you keep up with my videos, I have a Riley Redux 1 2016 and I have a 2017 uh, GT Pantera Comp. Now, I did buy both of these brand new. Uh, the Pantera Comp I got in Murray, Kentucky at Gear Up Cycles. And the Raleigh Redux 1 I got at Bike World in uh, Paducah, Kentucky. So, uh, I spread my business around. Okay, <clears throat> typically the first thing you're going to notice the difference in from a box store bike to a low, low budget quality bike is a lot of times maybe the weight of the bike. Um, typically your big box stores, uh, they carry bikes that are made out of a thicker, heavier, uh, aluminum, uh, the parts are heavier, the cranks, the the uh, frame, the forks, seat tube, see everything just weighs more. Is that a huge deal? Well that depends. How strong of a rider are you? How far are you going to ride? How fast do you want to go? Etc, etc. And being a heavier bike does not mean more quality. It means a heavier bike. Unless you're talking carbon fiber. I don't like plastic bikes. That's another story. One thing you're going to find on big box store bikes a lot of times is the wheels. The rims themselves. The rims. Uh, a lot of times they will be single walled rims, which means they are weaker and more susceptible to bending and breaking. Uh, you should always look to find a wheel that has um, a double wall and that they're going to be a, a higher grade, uh, they're going to last longer, they're not going to bend so easy. Another thing is your 
shifters. And your derailleur. Okay. Now, my uh, shifters and my derailleur on the Raleigh are not top grade. They're not the big high dollar fancy group set or drivetrain, however you want to call them. Uh, but they do the job. Number one, it's a trigger shifter where you're using your fingers and your thumb. That's what most people want. Uh, a lot of your big box store bikes are going to have the grip shift where they turn. Those are not that great unless you can go up to a really high quality bike that offers a real high quality grip twist and a lot of times those aren't on like these types of bikes they're on maybe your touring bikes or something like that or or just kind of your commuter bikes or you know something you might just take out around the park or something but they offer a higher quality better grade uh, more reliable more comfortable <clears throat> twist shift uh, on some of those bikes but a lot of your big box stores are gonna offer you more of the really really budget lower quality kind so uh, like I on this I have the Acer rear derailleur is it top of the line nope it gets the job done though it's not bad um, so that's one thing to look out for is the shifting mechanism the derailleur just make sure it's do your homework look at Google look at uh, YouTube search around and look what you're getting okay um, another thing is a lot of box store bikes don't offer a one by system now one by system is as it may suggest there's no gears up here in the front there's no derailleur there's no other chain rings there's just one chain ring right here and then all the gears are in the back okay and I have one shifter a lot most bikes you're gonna see have two shifters there'll be one over there <clears throat> for the most part most bicycle companies have went to one by and a two by really one buys are taken over just because of the simplicity it does lessen a little bit of the weight of the bike and a little bit less of the clutter on the cockpit Yes, I said cockpit up here. So instead of one, a shifter here and a shifter over here, plus a cable, another cable, and having to route it all, you got one. One shifter, one cable, one derailleur. You don't have to mess with the other derailleur. It's not there. <clears throat> um, big box store bikes are going to offer uh, bicycles that look the part you look at a bike when you go to Walmart or Kmart or Target something like that and they look pretty cool they do they look pretty cool but let's face it if you get a mountain bike at Walmart it's not meant to do the same thing as even the cheaper GT Pantera comp it's not gonna do it it's not gonna handle it now having said that let's get on to big store bikes just a little bit okay on to big store bikes uh, big box store bikes Walmart Target Kmart if they're even still around all these different places that you normally go into and you see bicycles okay number one they're cheap you can get a bike for $50, $100, $150 cheap okay everybody looks at that and that's great okay now you're gonna go and you're gonna look at the bikes and see what you like you're gonna look at it it's gonna catch your eye because they have some cool looking bikes so you're gonna do that and you're gonna go home you're gonna take this bike out of the car and you're gonna go all right you're gonna jump on the bike and before you know it the bikes gonna be slipping the handlebars moving around uh, the forks are going to be turning, the handlebars are going to be turning a different way, wheels liable to pop off, everything else. 
Here's the deal. Those places don't care about them bikes. The people that they hire to put those bikes together do it like that. And they don't care. They throw them together, get them done. 90% of the time, everything's going to be loose. And there's not going to be any oil or any grease anywhere. So if you're going to go and get a big uh, a box store uh, bicycle, make sure you take the time, if you know how to work on it, okay, if you're decent with that stuff and you can do it, take the time, take it apart, clean everything real good, re-oil, re-grease, lubage, all that good stuff, get it put back together nice and tight and right but you need to take caution whenever you buy a big box store bike because they're put together by basically a two-year-old um, also think about the kind of riding that you're gonna do what you want to do how you're gonna do it okay let's say you wanna ride on the road I'm gonna be a roadie I'm gonna ride on the road okay Walmart normally has a couple different little road bikes you you might find a drop a drop handlebar bike in there uh, and you're gonna find plenty of like uh, of the cruiser type <clears throat> sport type road bikes with the flat handlebars and the small you know the thinner tires a little bit you're gonna find a lot of those um, <clears throat> are you looking for distance are you looking for speed how you want to ride? Are you going to ride one day a week? Or are you going to ride four days a week or seven? Okay? That's going to matter. And also, when you buy a bicycle, don't just hop on it and take off because that bicycle is not made for you. And let's face it, 99% of the bicycles at Walmart, Kmart, Target, etc. usually come in one size. They usually have one size in stock and that's what you get. I'm six foot two. Are you? You know, my reach is different. My inseam is different. Uh, my comfort level is different. How about you? Are you going to ride the same bike I have? Probably not. My Raleigh is an extra large. See? My Pantera Comp is a large. Okay. We're not all going to ride the same size bikes. We don't all wear the same size shoes. So that's, a, that's one downfall of buying bikes at a big box store. So when you get on the bike, after you've taken it apart or after you've timed it, after you, even if you took it to the bike shop and had them go over it and fix it and do all kind of good stuff, get on the bike. Make sure you get a proper fit. You can even go to your bike shop and have them do it. Help you get a proper fit. Um, when you sit on the bike and you got your butt up here and your feet down here, when you're fully down here, your leg is not supposed to be completely straight. It's supposed to have a slight bend to it. Just a slight bend. So you're not overextending your legs. You're not supposed to be pivoting. If you have to pedal and you find yourself pivoting on the seat to try to reach pedals and you're kind of walling around on the seat, you're not fit. That's not right. So you need to adjust your seat, adjust the seat height, the to and fro or whatever it's called, the front and back. Adjust your seat up and down so that your legs have the proper bend and also your handlebars you know you can take spacers out and you can raise your handlebars up and down you can turn the bars front and back because normally they're going to have a little bit of a sweep to them where they kind of curve a smidgen so you might want them curved back a little you might want them curved straight or whatever you just gotta you have to experiment uh, I'm not really off track, but I'm kind of off track. But I just wanted to go into big box store bikes. And if you're going to get them, just go ahead and get, 
you know, make sure they're done properly, make sure you fit on the bike properly, and that's the same thing for a, a bike shop bike. Make sure that you fit on the bike, and they'll usually work with you while you're there looking at bikes. They'll fix all that for you and set it up and, and get you going. Uh, and you can test ride them and all that stuff. They'll let you test ride them usually out there in the parking lots and stuff. And <clears throat> but, uh, yeah. Anywho. The differences are Walmart, Kmart, Target, all those places don't care about their bikes. It's not that the bikes are just horrible quality for just everyday kicking around. You know, they're not horrible for that. But I don't know if you want to trust one to go 100 miles out and 100 miles back, especially without maintenance, making sure it's good. And that goes for their off-road bikes, too. You'll go there and you'll see mongoose and whatever, all kind of different bikes, and they look pretty cool. They look the part. They're not made for that. You're going to go out there and you're going to get knocked all over the place. Most of the suspension, most all the suspension on those bikes is a joke. Okay, and on my Pantera Comp, I have a budget-friendly fork. It's a good fork. It really is a pretty good fork. I mean, I'm a 260-pound guy, easy, 6'2". Uh, now, I don't do anything super extreme, but that fork takes uh, a good little beating, I'm sure, while I'm on it. Uh, it does pretty well. Uh, something else that you might notice is some bikes are made out of steel. Some bikes are made out of aluminum. Some bikes are made out of carbon. Uh, some bikes are made out of titanium. There's a whole different, you know, there's a, a whole different feel and a whole different ride. Uh, and there's a whole different price a lot of times associated with those bikes. Uh, both, of, both of these bikes here are your standard aluminum. Of course, aluminum, just like any other metal, has different numbers and stuff that describes what strength it is or what this or that it is, I, you know. I don't look into all that it, you know you can look into it all you want but whatever but you're gonna have differences steel of course is heavier aluminum's light titanium's lighter carbon's lighter if I'm not mistaken I could be leave a comment and let me know titanium is highly sought after though people love titanium for some reason don't know why um, <clears throat> All right, kind of moving over here to the Pantera Comp GT. Now, this being the bottom line of the Pantera uh, GT line, it's not going to have everything that the middle bike has and the higher grade bike has. You have the Pantera Comp, you have the Pantera Elite, and the Pantera Expert. Uh, the comp has a 9 by a 2 by 9 2 up here and 9 back here trigger oh, trigger right here oh. the other models have a one by system and in the rear they have one extra gear each like this has a nine speed the next one has a 10 and the next one has an 11 <clears throat> that's great I'd like to have that but it wasn't worth the price difference this before tax was eight hundred dollars so uh, the next model up I believe was twelve hundred and then the next one after that the big one was like eighteen hundred I don't have that kind of money. I didn't want to. I didn't want to try to come up with that kind of money. So I went with this one. It serves its purpose. It holds my weight. It pedals. The gears shift fine. Um, it does everything I need for right now. So that's good. Uh, it would probably do everything that you need. Oh yeah. So. The GT, all three of the GT Pantera series, um, they all have the same frame. So you're not getting anything different there. 
they have the same size wheels or same size tires and wheels so you're not getting nothing new there <clears throat> they all had 120 uh, millimeter travel shocks uh, now of course these are the, the, the Suntour Okay, these are these are budget friendly forks. Uh, you're not going to get these necessarily at Walmart. Uh, these are a little step up from that. Um, they are air. They're good, really decent quality. No complaints. Um, the other models, the other models of this have like the the better bottom brackets I don't know all the names and stuff this has the square taper or whatever that everybody seems to hate and my Raleigh has the same one but uh they work okay to me I haven't had any real issues so you have to forgive all the dogs barking please we got dogs over there we got my dog barking so there you go but uh of course the higher end models of these bikes are going to have a little better wheels, a little better hub, a difference in the in the drivetrain with the more gears. Um, but you're not getting just tons a bit different. You know, you have to look at your budget, what you're going to do. <clears throat> Be realistic, you know. Uh, most people, they get all excited and they buy a bicycle and they ride it couple of times and then it sits in their garage and you know a year or two later they sell it so don't go crazy on your budget okay I'm telling you don't do it stick to a decent budget okay and I know $500 sounds crazy but $500 will get you a really nice entry-level decent budget bike okay um, and by the time you hit a thousand, you're getting, you're getting all you'll probably ever need. Okay. That goes for your typical road bike with the drop bars, to road bikes with the flat bars, to your urban shredders like my Raleigh. Um, all these types of bikes. You know, your standard bikes, your hardtails. You know, you spend a thousand dollars, five hundred to a thousand dollars on a hardtail, you're gonna have a perfectly fine hardtail. It's gonna be okay. You'll never outride the bike. Okay? And when you do, hey, that means you're ready for an upgrade. And then it's okay to spend two thousand dollars, five thousand dollars, if you're still riding. Uh you will notice on my GT that I do have custom pedals uh, custom stem and handlebars and grips And I got a little cage, a little water cage, bottle cage. Um, so I did spend a little money. Um, did it make a huge difference? Not really. The pedals did. Pedals are really good. Um, I'd say if anything, upgrade your pedals because the pedals on most of your budget bikes like this are still going to be kind of eh. So get you a good set of pedals. Uh, okay and another thing a uh, very important thing with bicycles for me and for lots of people are brakes gotta have good brakes okay this isn't 20 years ago this ain't 100 years ago no more rim brakes remember the rim brakes touch right here and you go right there and the brakes go right there and they they don't stop you you don't stop with them things. I don't care if you got the best brakes money can buy. They didn't work. Today, 
when you go shopping for a bicycle, you make sure your bicycle has disc. Disc. Okay? Those are hydraulic disc brakes. Good brakes work. I'm good 260 pounds. They stop me just fine. Don't be all caught up in names. Don't be all caught up in how many pistons it has. Just get you a bike with some disc brakes because even the cheapest disc brake is going to stop you a hundred times better than any rim brake. These, these brakes here, see the wire? These brakes on my Raleigh are manual, are uh, wire uh, brakes. They have cable brakes. Uh, they're not hydraulic. And I have zero problems. None. Very good brakes. Do not be fooled by marketing and by people telling you that you need something better. Because they work just fine so guys I think I've gotten out all I want to say about trying to spend your money wisely do I recommend a Walmart bike over a cheaper budget friendly uh, bike shop bike I can't. I can't say that I recommend it unless unless you're just a little kid and you're just wanting to ride and and you're getting them a little BMX or something smaller and and uh, and doing that. You know, I, I I just think that and that's not. Remember what I told you. You can take it, take it apart, and clean it, regrease lube, tighten everything. Okay, you can, but you can go to the to your local bike shop, get a bike that's already done, put together. They'll help. They'll help fit you on the bike. They'll help set it up properly, and it's done right. As long as you go to a good bike shop. Not all bike shops are equal. So I have to say that. I would I would have to tell people to go to the bike shop and go for a a good lower end budget bicycle over a big box store brand type bike. Um again, a thousand dollars and less, you're set. Okay. If you're neat if you're wanting a full suspension mountain bike, shocks in the front and the rear, you're gonna have to spend more than a thousand dollars really to get something that's going to be really decent fifteen hundred dollars will get you into the a good entry point uh, with a full suspension and then two thousand dollars and up you know you're going to start getting better components and better shocks and you know the good thing is you can upgrade all these things at any point so anyway guys i hope you found something uh, entertaining or or something you didn't know maybe in these videos uh, if you have any comments uh, suggestions comments anything for anyone or me or anything at all if I said something wrong help me out um, if you want any more information on these bikes that's uh, my Raleigh is a Raleigh Redux 1 I bought it in 2016 February 11th brand new this is the GT Pantera Comp, bought it brand new in 2017, uh, May 31st, 2017. So uh, you can look these up online, check them out, you can compare other bikes and other brands and all kind of different stuff. You know, these are just what I chose. That's not what you got to choose, there's a million bikes out there, and they're all good. Don't get hung up on names, they're all good. So guys, I appreciate you watching. If you made it to the end, I know it's a little long video, sorry. Like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I try to do all this for free, no monetization, no ads, no nothing. 
spread the word, do the bird of the word, burn it, burn it, burn it. Okay? Guys, get up, get out, get ran, do it to it. On your big box store bike, on your bike shop bike, whatever you're going to do, get out there and do it and have fun. We'll see you later.